Hello class, uh, continuing on uh, sketching of the sine and cosine waves with three main uh, attributes, which would be amplitude, period, and fascia. So what I'd first like to do is introduce this idea of amplitude. I think out of the three, it's probably the easiest and uh, hopefully the most intuitive so what we mean by amplitude is the, uh, if you think about it in a graphical sense, it's going to be the peak and how high the waveform goes and how low the waveform goes. And that's called the amplitude. And the uh, first sine wave that we've talked about is uh, the sine wave where the A value was a one, right? And so the highest point was plus one and the lowest point was minus one. And if you look at this slide here, you could see that that would be the blue graph that we have here. And then if you multiply it <coughs> by a number bigger than one, uh, like two, three, four, you could see that the peaks are gonna go up, right? Because one times three is three and uh, minus one times three is minus three. And if you end up multiplying it by a number between zero and one, you'll see that the peaks will come down like one half times one is one half. So that's what we define as amplitude. And when you're asked the question, what is the amplitude? The amplitude is always a positive number. That's why we have this uh, absolute value, and it just tells you how far uh, the or how high the sine wave or cosine wave will go. And so here's our definition: is that the sine wave has an amplitude of a, and we'll get back to the period in, in a second. So what I'd like to do now is take a look at a graph of y equals three and let's use uh we're going to use x now as the angle and so if we do that let's get to the whiteboard and so our equation is y equals sine of x or x is the angle and the book does radian so i'm going to follow the book because most of your homework and web assign is radians. So we'll do radians. And so, uh, whoops, I got my three. Three sine of X. And so what we want to do is we want to graph this and we're going to use our five main points again and so the period we know is 2 pi so this would be x and this would be y so when we plug zero in for sine you get out your calculator look at these tables that's what these tables are good sine of zero is zero so three times zero equals zero so again we start at the same point so the next key number is pi over two. So sine of pi over two is one. Three times one equals three. And so if we did that, you would see that this next point would be up here. That's point number two, which is the peak. And that would be three. So what is the next one? So the next key is pi. So again, sine of pi is zero. So three times zero equals zero. And so we get back to the x-axis here or the horizontal axis. The fourth point is three pi over two, and that would be minus one. So three times minus one equals minus three. So that is our lowest point, and that would be three pi over two, and that would be right here. 
And the next point here is two pi. And again, we go back to where we started. So it'd be zero times three, which is zero. So two pi would be right here. So this is what I want you to be able to sketch is these key five points. And this would be <coughs> minus three. So we define the amplitude of being three. And that is the peak or the absolute value of the minimum as well. So that's uh, our definition with regards to uh, amplitude. And the next thing that we're going to introduce is this idea of period. And right now, we've talked about the period of the sine wave being 2 pi and the period of the cosine wave being 2 pi. But how do we change that? Well, how do we change that is we'll take the uh, input, right, the x value, the angle, and multiply it by some number k. And if we multiply it by the number, uh, you can see that we'll define the period as 2 pi, because as I said before, we always define it as radians, every book does, divided by the number k. So let me show you a couple examples with regards to that. So say like we had y equals sine of 2x. Well, if we had y equals sine of 2x, that means our k value is 2. So what ends up happening is that the period actually uh, shrinks. So instead of being two pi, it becomes two pi divided by two or pi. So now that equation repeats itself every pi times. So you can see how that it kind of moves faster, right? And if we multiply it, for example, by a half, you can see that it actually would be the period would be two pi divided by one half, which is four pi. And you can see now it stretches out. So now the value repeats every four pi. And so if we uh, talk about doing this calculation now, and what happens when we change the period from uh, 2 pi to pi. So let's take a look at what we have here on our whiteboard. Okay, and so we had the amplitude of 3 in this case. So now let's change the color to red and see if we could take a look at y equals 3 times sine of 2x. So what ends up happening is now the period is defined as 2 pi divided by k. Well, our value of k is 2, right? And so what we have is 2 pi divided by 2. And so our period is pi. And so now in this case, our uh, period of pi means that the value will repeat itself every pi times. And so if you think about the way that we've picked our five key points, our five key points are split into quarters. If you look at our five key points, We have point one, which is zero. That's where we start. And our period is two pi. And so you could see that we have four quarters. How do we pick those quarters? Well, you take the period and you divide it by four. That's how you pick the four quarters. And so what we did in the brown one is two pi divided by four, and that equals pi over two, right? So you could see pi over two is the first quarter. You add another pi over two for the second quarter, another pi over two for the third quarter, 
And where we start again is back to uh, two pi. So how do we do the red one? Well, the, uh, where's the eraser? Here we go. So now we're uh, on the red one. So in this case now, we have uh, the period is defined as pi, right? So how do we split it up in the four quarters? Now it's going to be split up over pi over four. So the, how this changes is uh, the start point is actually the phase shift. And right now our phase shift is at zero because I'll show you that in a little bit, but if there's nothing adding or subtracting to the uh, angle inside the sine wave it's, or cosine wave, the phase shift is zero. But here's our new key points. Let me just erase all this so we could do it. So our first key point is pi over four. And so how does that work? Well, zero is still zero. So the red and the brown look the same. And then what happens here? Well, we have pi over four. And so what happens in our equation? Well, what happens in our equation is what is, um, let's see here, I need a little space. So let me erase this down here. So what happens to do this calculation? Well, here's what you do. It would be three times sine of two times pi over four, right? So if you look at that, you would get three times sine of what? Pi over two. You see what I mean by the change by doing the multiplication? What's, what's sine of pi over two? It's three times one, which is 90 degrees. So this would be zero again, and this would be three. So you could see that this point would uh, be up there. So what's our next of our five key points? Well, you add another pi over four to this. Pi over four plus pi over four is pi over two. And so, if we do that calculation, what is pi over two times two? Well, that's sine of pi. Sine of pi is zero, so three times zero is zero. So this point here would be zero. So at pi over two, in this case, we would go down here. What is the fourth point? Well, we would add another pi over four, trying to find our four quarters. So another pi over four would be three pi over four, right? And then what would that equal? Well, what that equals is three pi over four. And if you did that multiplication, you would get these cancel here, two goes in the four two times. So that would be three pi over two. And remember that would be three times of minus one. And so that would be minus three. So you could see a three pi over four, you go down to minus three. So you add another pi over four to find our fifth point, and that would be pi. And if you plug that into your sine equation, you would see that you would get two times pi, and that would be two pi here, let's write that again. And that would be three times zero, and that would be zero again, right where we ended up starting. So it would look like that. So you see the, co the comparison between the two. And you can see that in this case, the five points basically, uh, when you multiply it by a, that's a three there, uh, multiply it by a number bigger than one, you could see that we actually uh, have the waveform uh, move faster, kind of doubles in its speed. 
And so that illustrates the period. And the last thing we're going to talk about, and I know this recorded lecture is a little longer, but I want to do all three of them on the same whiteboard. And when I stop the recording, the whiteboard goes away. We're going to talk about this idea of phase shift. And what the phase shift is, is shows you where the waveform starts. And in this case, so far, everything starts at the angle of zero. But if we add or subtract a number to the x value or the angle, we do what's called a phase shift. And in the electrical engineering world, we had phase shifts all the time. And this is the definition here. And here it puts all three of them together. So slide number 26 here is a really important slide. Uh, and I don't think I showed you the slide. So let me get back to the slide here. And what it is, is uh, the A value, as you can see in the equation, is the amplitude. Now look at how the K works. Well, the K uh, gives you the phase shift and the B, I'm sorry, the K gives helps with the period, which is two pi divided by K. And the phase shift gives you where the waveform actually starts. So what I'd like to do now is do uh, one more graph where we're going to take what we just did and do a phase shift of pi over four. And uh, it's a little bit tricky because you can see that we're uh, putting a negative pi over four in for the B value, right? But the phase shift is actually a positive because it's looking for the zero point. And it's easier to do when we kind of go and uh, walk through this example. So let me do this last one here on the whiteboard. So uh, to graph this one, we are going to do, oops, I need to find a little more space here. So what we have now is we have, let's pick uh, green. So we are going to do y equals three sine of two x minus pi over four. So our amplitude is three. Our uh, period is two pi divided by k, which would be pi. And our phase shift is pi over four. And so the idea is that the waveform starts at the phase shift. So that is our first point. And then the same theory works is what is uh, the quarters? You know, how do we pick those five points? Well, the quarters is again, pi over four. So where we start, it would be at the phase shift. And then every, the other four points, we just continue to add pi over four to. And so let me show you how that works with my little table here. And so I'm gonna erase these. So remember that where we start is pi over four. And what is the y value? Well, Let's go back down here and do that same calculation to show you how that works. And you're gonna see it as gonna end up being zero. So when we plug that in, you get three 
times sine of two. And so this would be pi over four minus pi over four. See how that works? What is pi over four minus pi over four? That would be zero. So it would be three sine of two times zero. And sine of zero is zero. So three times zero equals zero. So that first point is zero. So you see that here, the green one, starts so you see what we mean by phase shift we move it by uh, uh, pi over four to the right so what's the next point well what's pi over four plus pi over four that would be pi over two so that's our next of the five key points so let's do that calculation so that would be pi over two minus pi over four, which is three sine of two times pi over four. And you could see that would be three sine of pi over two. What's sine of pi over two is one. So that would be three times one, which would be equal to three. So this value would be three. So you can see at pi over two, we actually hit at that same point on the brown one, which is kind of cool. Next step, you add another pi over four to pi over two, and you would get three pi over four. So let's do that calculation. And so when we do that, we get three pi over four minus pi over four, and that would give us three. And then remember, we still have this two. And so when you subtract that, you end up with two pi over four. And so that would be three times sine of pi. Well, sine of pi is zero, so three times zero equals zero. So this point here would be zero. So at pi over four, we end up down here at uh, zero. So what is our fourth point? Well, our fourth point is again, adding pi over four to three pi over four, and we get back to pi. So when we do this calculation, oops, I need to erase it for a little more, get rid of this. So when we do this calculation, it's uh, pi minus pi over four. And remember, pi is four pi over four, right? So this would be uh, three pi over four when you do the subtraction. And then when you do the two goes into four two times, this would be three times sine of three pi over two. What is sine of three pi over two? Minus one, right? So that would be three times minus one equals minus three. So this is our lowest point. And so at pi, we go all the way down to uh, minus three. So the last point here is you add pi over four to pi, and that would be five pi over four. So uh, this should get us back to um, right where we started, right? And let's see if it does. So if this theory is right, this would be five pi over four. And when you subtract that, you get uh, four pi over four, which is pi. And so what's three times sine of two pi? Well, two pi, sine of two pi is zero. So it's three times zero equals zero. So this would be zero. So this point right here would be five pi over four. And that's where we end up going again. So the, to sketch the five points would look like that. I do want to point out that these things do go on forever. So you see that you could put arrows at the end of all these. Uh, but I didn't want to do that initially to show you that um, what I really want you to focus on is being able to generate those five points and sketch 
one whole period. Because if you know one period and you know how to sketch that, it just goes on forever on both directions. So uh, to finish, um, Uh, this, <clears throat> I do want to point out that uh, this is the waveform that I know and love and use for, uh, was a design engineer for a good couple decades, uh, nah, maybe about 15 years. Uh, and what we did is we took this waveform, which is what comes out of your uh, plug. So if you end up getting something caught in oscilloscope and measured what the waveform looks like, it looks like this. And you could see that uh, it looks exactly like a sine wave. Um, and uh, the period is actually, uh, we call it 60 hertz waveform. And that's uh, hertz is the inverse of seconds. So uh, this uh, waveform uh, repeats one over 60 uh, times a second. And you could see that what is the amplitude? Well, the amplitude is uh, hard to see exactly, uh, but the amplitude is actually um, 169 uh, volts <laughs> with regard to that. And that ends up being uh, 120 volt sine wave when we talk about measuring the uh, uh, voltage that uh, is used for the uh, conversion factor. And the good news is, what is our phase shift looking at that? Well, you can see that the phase shift here is zero, but uh, we do some things in circuitries and stuff when we do some uh, conversion so we could power your TV, your cell phones, uh, all the equipment that's in your house, et cetera. Uh, we do some stuff that convert this uh, using phase shifts as well. So you could see that uh, this waveform is near and dear to my heart. And a lot of students ask, well, is this math practical? Yes, uh, super practical in this case. I, I had to deal with this literally uh, every day of my uh, design life, uh, designing power systems, because we transform this waveform to power a variety of different equipment. So that ends the uh, lecture for uh, section 2.3, which is sketching or graphing sine and cosine waves with three main attributes. We have amplitude, we have period, and we have phase shift.